Morning, everyone, and welcome to the School of the Arts Convocation. Roll tape. Please welcome Dr. Jeffrey Weinman, Dean of the Becton College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I think that's a wonderful video uh, to introduce the School of the Arts because it was done by our own students. And I think they did a great job. Uh, I want to begin by thanking the School of the Arts Advisory Board, a number of whose members are with us this morning. Their support of the school has really made a tremendous difference uh, to our uh, success moving forward. Uh, I also want to thank Liz Catrini and uh, Michael Ramos, who have uh, created the School of the Arts Alumni uh, Board, and they're really doing uh, some great work. And I especially want to thank Laura Reynolds and Karen uh, Hamilton uh, for um, organizing uh, much of today's event. And a very, very special thank you to Kate Neiman and Stephen Hollis, who really put this program together. So thanks to all of them. <clears throat> In, in an interview with Scene 4 magazine, the Thai artist Ithapol Thangklok 
talks about how he came to be the artist that he is. He says that as a boy, he practiced drawing alone. Unlike other boys at my age, he says, I didn't play any sports and preferred being alone to socializing with friends because drawing needs concentration, silence, and time. After he enrolled in college, he was, in his words, delighted that I could learn all of the art subjects I dreamt of. <clears throat> he goes on to say that, at that time, I didn't understand the principles of artistic drawing, that I had to be more emotional and have feelings about reality and beauty, and this required constant learning. He warns, however, about the danger of complacency. He says there are problems most artists faced when they found their suitable and unique style of art making for themselves, they tended to do the same kind of technique and style over and over. Every piece looks almost the same as they cannot escape their own self view. Hence, the most important competitors for them are themselves. In other words, artists have to think for themselves, destroying the framework or breaking the mold so that they can, in his words, think outside the box and create something new, and artists should always find new ideas. This includes all of those in the arts, whether it's the fine art of painting or sculpture or theater, film, animation, graphic design, dance, creative writing, or music. The need to grow is there, to be open to new ways of conceiving it. In another piece, theater director Ned Bobkoff speaks about his meeting the great artist Jackson Pollock. Pollock, he says, was not painting an illusion, a symbol, or a metaphor. He was simply evolving through creative energy a history of his work. I loved it, Bobkoff says. That's what I want to do, I thought. That's how I want to work with performers. Trust, observation, listen, pay attention to the gathering insights, the sudden action shaped by necessity, a dialogue evolving, all discovered in the process of making decisions. Decision making is at the heart of performance as it is in all of the arts. So what Bob Koff uh, focuses on is a commitment and courage, the courage to decide where you want to go with your art and whatever form it may take. He goes on to speak about the collaborative process that he as a director engaged in with actors and painters and scenic designers and musicians. Here at FDU, we want you to see art as both a personal journey and the collaborative process. At the candle lighting ceremony in August, I said to you that the college journey is not so much about finding yourselves as it is about creating yourselves. And that is exactly what you will do with the support of your faculty as you begin this exciting journey. I won't say best of luck, but rather be your best. That's all anyone can ask of you or that you can ask of yourselves. Thank you. And now I turn this back to our Master of Ceremonies, Mitchell Follin. Mitchell. I'd like to ask everyone here this morning to indulge me in a little exercise, and if you've done this before, please just bear with me. I would like for you to just raise one of your hands as high as you possibly can in the air. As high as you possibly can. And now, raise them even higher. Thank you. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, it all comes full circle. Um, but good morning, everyone. My name is Mitchell Folan. I'm a senior theater arts major, and on behalf of all the upperclassmen, I would like to welcome the inaugural class of the School of the Arts. All disciplines in the School of the Arts are as follows. Film, animation, 
studio arts, graphic design, creative writing, and theater arts. I would, I would like to ask all those students to now please stand so that you can be recognized. Now, when I first came to Fairleigh Dickinson University, uh, I like to think of myself as an innocent, naive, bright-eyed freshman. Those of you in the audience who know me can stop rolling your eyes now. <laughs> Other people, I think, might have seen me differently, but the point I'm trying to make here is that I was here with a fresh start. Um, I had had a positive high school experience, but I was so excited for the opportunities ahead of me. I decided that my purpose in coming here to Fairleigh Dickinson was not to be told that I'm good, but rather to be told that I needed to improve. I want to leave here being the absolute best that I can be, and I need to learn how to do that. I don't want to pay for a college education that's going to tell me that I'm good. I want to pay for a college education that's going to serve me and make me better and make me learn. Well, as with so many things in life, that is easier said than done. Uh, I found that I was the type of person uh, that was content to skate by in life, only wanting to try my hardest when I saw it fit. Uh, in my mind, why should I give more than, you know, what's necessary if what's necessary is going to make people happy? I didn't really see a point in extending myself and my abilities as much as possible to really, absolutely, truly be the best that I can be. Fortunately, here at Fairleigh Dickinson, I've been blessed with professors who unlocked for me the secret to my full potential. And for me, that's to be the best that I can possibly be, I need to get mad. And as crazy as that sounds, I'll explain. Um, I'm so grateful to these professors for unlocking this secret for me. I found that in so many different classes and shows and other experiences, when my professors and my teachers would get me mad, that would inspire me to push myself as hard as I possibly can. And in the end, I would make work that would amaze not only others, but myself. You know, I can think of one example when in an acting class, a teacher would accuse me of not trying my absolute hardest, and again, only skating by. And I went home afterwards and I said to myself, how dare she? How dare she tell me that I'm not trying my hardest? I'm here giving it all I can. But what do you know, the next week I had come in and done work that I had never done before. Like I said, amazing others as much as I was amazing myself. The secret for unlocking our own potential is different. I don't think it would be a very good thing if the secret for all of us to be the best we can possibly be is to get mad. Uh, that only works for me. Um, but we are so fortunate to be in a place where we can get access to this secret. We are in an environment where we have teachers whose mission it is to make us the best we can possibly be. These teachers that we have here at Fairleigh Dickinson make it their sole purpose to unlock, their to unlock our full potential. It's up to us, however, to let them work their magic. It's up to us to let them in and do their work. And sometimes that can be scary. Sometimes it can be really scary. But we've already taken the first step by coming to FDU. You guys are here. And that's honestly the hardest part of the process. And I have found in my experiences here that sometimes taking baby steps is the only thing you can do. And it turns out to be the best thing that you can do. Overall, I like to sum it up with this quote from Marshall Mathers. Look, if you had one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? I'd like to now bring this full circle to where we started at the beginning. You'll remember that I asked you to raise your hands as high as you possibly could. And then I asked you to raise them even higher. Well, if I, if I had asked you to raise your hands as high as you possibly can the first time, none of you should have been able to raise them higher when I asked you to do it again. However, each and every one of you did whatever you could, whether it was straining just a little bit more, shifting in your seat, to raise your hand even higher. And the point I'm trying to make here is that, how true is that in life? How many times do we tell ourselves that we're trying as hard as we possibly can, only to find that we can actually go further? 
we'll do whatever it takes when we're put in the best possible situations to make ourselves improve and be the best that we can possibly be. And you know, the truth is that I don't think any of us here will ever realize our own full potential. But just think how awesome it is that we don't know the limits of our own greatness and that we will always be better and greater than we possibly think we can be. I'd like to leave you all here this morning with a quote from Tony Kushner's magnum opus, Angels in America. The great work begins. I want each and every one of you here this morning to know that you all have a great work in each of you waiting to be done. I urge you, I beg you, I plead with you, stop waiting, stop making excuses. Make today the first day of the rest of your life. We all have infinite possibilities. We are very fortunate to have with us here this morning Dr. Christopher Capuano, President of Fairleigh Dickinson University, and I'd like to invite him up now to say a few words. Thank you, Mitchell, and good morning, everyone. Before I begin my uh, formal remarks, uh, I want to share a personal observation with you. As a president, you're not supposed to have favorites. Just like as a parent with more than one child, you're not supposed to have a favorite. But I have to say, um, having spent the last two days with students from the School of the Arts, I'm very impressed uh, with our students in particular. Uh, impressed by their passion and love uh, for what they do. And as you saw a moment ago, it's uh, clearly evident. And where they're going. So uh, kudos to all of you. Uh, we're all very proud of you. And we hope you grow in number uh, very quickly. <laughs> I'm honored to be here this morning uh, to welcome you to this inaugural convocation for our new School of the Arts. I want to first congratulate Dean Wyman, uh, Dr. Lieboff, the school's advisory board, the school's alumni association, of course, the amazing faculty, staff, and students who have worked very hard to bring this vision to reality. While today is about some things that are new, it is also about some things that are very much a part of who we are and who we have been for a very long time now. You see, the arts have been long ingrained in the fabric of this institution, 
And we have a rich history of cultural appreciation and education. Our founder, Dr. Peter Sammartino, was an educational pioneer who had a great passion for the arts. In fact, Peter believed that two things that make life meaningful are, fe are feeling exhilarated by beauty and being able to create. And those who appreciate the arts would undoubtedly agree with that assertion. During Peter's time at the university, artists were regularly brought to campus. Musicians often performed, dramatic productions were routinely staged, and art exhibits were constantly featured. Peter and his wife Sally were renowned for traveling and collecting art from around the world and bringing it to the university. During his early years, while the country endured World War II, Peter would often borrow a truck and drive to New York City to pick up paintings and sculptures. This is the legacy that Peter instilled, and those who followed Peter sought to build on this legacy. Through the years, we grew as a university, and we have had many individuals follow in Peter's footsteps. They knew truth, as Henry Miller once proclaimed, that art teaches nothing except the significance of life. However, while different efforts in different artistic genres would emerge and provide students with inspiration and creative outlets, we didn't have a coherent focus or a true learning center at the university that would bring students together in an integrated approach to arts education. That is, until now. Enter the School of the Arts. Infused with the spirit of, San Mar of the San Martinos, propelled by the creativity of our extraordinary faculty, and energized by a booming market for creative expression, the FDU School of the Arts is ready to deliver something very special and unique for our students. The school's 21st century model blends the liberal and creative arts with the business acumen of entrepreneurial training, thereby creating a new paradigm for arts education. In addition to a dedicated group of faculty who are accomplished artists with extraordinary professional achievements, we have an alumni base of graduates who have made important contributions throughout the arts. And in short, we have no shortage of role models and educators ready to share knowledge and help students unleash their creativity. In closing, I want to leave you with the words of the great Pablo Picasso who said, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist as we grow up. The School of the Arts at Fairleigh Dickinson University will allow these artists to stay true to their passion, keep their creative fires burning, and make a difference in their lives and in their worlds. I can think of no greater mission and no greater charge for the School of the Arts than that. Please join me in officially welcoming the School of the Arts to the university's landscape. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Gonsar is a 2004 graduate from the Fairleigh Dickinson University Film Program. Since graduating, Brian has gone on to produce two feature films, music videos, hundreds of commercials, including Super Bowl commercials, and branded content for many Fortune 500 companies. Brian has worked for several prestigious ad agencies such as BBDO and J. Walter Thompson. Currently, he is a senior vice president, executive producer at Hill Holiday, where he heads up the production for Bank of America's advertising. He is an active board member of FDU School of the Arts and is a member of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Brian was also inducted into Fairleigh Dickinson University's Athletic Hall of Fame in 2017. Please help me in welcoming Brian.
Hello. So usually with my job, I'm on the other side of the camera, not in front of people, so it's a little different for me. But um, I really like what uh, what's happening here so much so that I tried to make my way onto the board of the uh, School of the Arts to make a difference where I could. So just wanted to talk a little bit today about getting your best creative output uh, that you can. Um, and like a lot of you here, I once studied in the halls of, of FDU, but you know, really a lot has changed since I was here. I mean, there's no such thing as YouTube or social media to post my projects or pictures to. Um, I had to go to a gallery. I couldn't walk around uh, a gallery or museum without, with uh, Google Arts and Culture. Um, and I can't, couldn't use that smartphone to shoot a film on. Um, but one thing that's remained consistent is FDU's commitment to the arts, which is evident by the convocation today. So I'm pretty sure that everyone uh, that's here has some sort of creative spark inside them waiting to ignite and, and be expressed in a number of different ways. I know I had that spark when I first came here, and what I really wanted to do was make music videos. That was my passion and what I really wanted to do. Luckily, my professors were on board with that and allowed me to, um, to create that, use that as school projects, use as uh, senior theses, and it allowed me to come out of here with a, uh, with a great reel. And from that, it allowed me to you know, produce two feature films, like it was said, um, one with Howard Lebov, and uh, also kind of dive head first into a career in producing commercials. In every commercial that I do, uh, I'm creatively involved from the beginning to the end, uh, whether it's uh, finding the right director, editor, um, figuring out who would be the best person to cast uh, for the role, working with uh, composers and recording artists to figure out the music, figuring out how to handle it um, within the budget and the time that we have, uh, and so on. But really touching every piece of the project means that I have to be pretty well-rounded uh, in various disciplines of the arts. But that's not a bad thing. You know, I found that to truly get the best creative output, it's a collaboration. You know, for one, it helps uh, working with others, helps you benefit from their skill set. If I had a project with uh, dancing in it, you know, that's not really my forte. So uh, I surround myself with uh, talented people, that choreographers or dancers, that really help progress the project. Uh, when I had to do an art installation in Bryant Park last year for a, um, for a client, uh, I wouldn't have been my best unless I uh, engaged the artist community and found an artist. And he wouldn't have been able to realize his vision if it wasn't for the talented uh, carpenters and production designers who excelled in their field. So collaboration is key because we all need creative folks to surround us uh, for the best results. The other way to, that I found keep me well-rounded and everyone well-rounded in uh, your specific creative specialization is, um, is to experience different types of arts. You must be aware of what else is out there uh, to help influence your thinking and expand your thinking. I mean, I don't think that Hamilton would have been the big success that it is if Lin-Manuel Miranda what, didn't have a deep love of musical theater and also, you know, been ingrained in, in hip hop. You know, alone, both music uh, genres are great and influential, but the experience that he had, you know, propelled him to fuse both genres together and create what uh, what's now known as today. So that's what I challenge everyone here who's studying to do, and immerse yourself in as many discipline of the arts as you can, cross-pollinate and collaborate with uh, your fellow classmates, and use your time here to work on as many projects as you can. I know when I was here when my roommates couldn't find me, they usually knew I was kind of locked away in one of these uh, rooms editing or working on a project. Um, a lot of projects that I had, I know one year the theater department was building a bunch of flats on the, uh, um, on the stage here, so I found kind of every projector that I could in the uh, in the university, working with other people and projected footage and shot uh, shot a band playing on that, you know. But I use different people from uh, different departments in the um, uh, in the arts here. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, um, when I was writing this, I was thinking about this. A couple of weeks ago, I was finished working on a project where I was shooting, uh, filming people like. Matt Damon and Ken Burns and Bono and Tori Birch, and they're all very famous people now, but at one point they too were just a kid with a guitar or a script uh, or a camera or a dream in fashion. But you know, with their creativity, you know, talking with them, they've collaborated with a lot of other people and they've uh, surrounded themselves with people that would support their creative talents. And through that, they were able to thrive and make a difference in the world through art. So for everyone else here, 
I challenge you to support the arts and the students that are here and open their eyes to as many experiences, art forms, and points of view as possible. That's one thing that I really got out of um, the school when I was here. And I think if you do this, I truly believe that it will make a difference in a life and also make the world richer in general. So, thank you. Also amongst our distinguished guests this morning is Dr. Jillian Small, Provost of Fairleigh Dickinson University and Vice President of Academic Affairs. Please welcome Dr. Small. Thank you and good morning. I'm really delighted to participate in this convocation for Fairleigh Dickinson School of the Arts and send also my congratulations to Dean Weinman and to Professor Lieboff and thanks to the School of the Arts Advisory Board and the Alumni Association and of course to the faculty and let me please also welcome our first uh, class of students to this uh, school. At a time when we, we read much about a movement away from students majoring in the arts and humanities and concentrating more on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, some may question why a school of the arts and why now? As a scientist myself, I can give you my thoughts about that. And that is that I believe that the arts and humanities are critically important to creating well-rounded citizens. Years of research have shown that art education is closely linked to almost everything that we as a nation say that we want for our children and demand from our schools, academic achievement, social and emotional development, civic engagement, and equitable opportunity. Involvement in the arts has been associated with gains in math, reading, co cognitive ability, critical thinking, and verbal skills. Art learning can also improve motivation, concentration, confidence, and teamwork, and I think we've seen some of that already this morning. I believe that there's a great opportunity to combine the arts and the sciences. And in fact, I'm involved in a non-for-profit that specifically tasks itself with doing that. But we're not alone, as many now add the letter A to STEM to create STEAM. In fact, this term was shepherded by John Maeda, an executive designer technologist and former president of the Rhode Island School of Design. He stated that he believes that art and design are poised to transform our economy in the 21st century, just like science and technology did in the last century. He stated, quote, the similarities between how artists and scientists work far outweigh their stereotypical differences. Both are dedicated to asking the big questions placed before us. What is true? Why does it matter? How can we move society forward? We know that the scientist laboratory and the artist studio are two of the last places reserved for open-ended inquiry, for failure to be welcomed as part of the process, and for learning to occur by a continuous feedback loop between thinking and doing. In fact, in Da Vinci's time, when expertise in art and science had not yet become so polarized, they coexisted naturally. I agree with this, and I know that the School of, Arts, of the Arts here at FDU has been conceptualized with many of these thoughts in mind, collaborating across disciplines to provide the best possible opportunities for our students, having an entrepreneurship thrust that allows our students many future career opportunities. Finally, on a personal note, I have a son who's currently a junior in high school who loves technology, gaming, and 3D printing, while also being extremely creative and also enjoys attending the theater and recently I found out joined the school photography club. He's thinking about studying animation and computer graphics as he looks ahead at college and may well enter through a school of the arts such as this here at FDU. I think we have the right ideas for our school and I wish everybody the greatest success in following through with them. Thank you. Maybe he's right. Maybe I'm not meant to work in some dumb office for the rest of my life. Maybe, maybe I have a higher purpose.
What's a purpose? A purpose is direction to your life. It could be a job, a family, it could be the pursuit of knowledge, or wealth. Everybody's purpose is different. The best thing about a purpose is that it gives your life meaning. I want a purpose. Purpose. It's that little flame that lights a fire under your ass. <laughs> purpose. It keeps you going strong like a car with a full tank of gas. Everyone else has a purpose, so what's mine? Hmm. Oh look, here's a penny. It's from the year I was born. <gasps> it's a sign. I don't know how I know, but I'm gonna find my purpose. I don't know where I'm gonna look, but I'm gonna find my purpose. Gotta find out, don't wanna wait. Got to make sure that my life will be great. Gotta find my purpose before it's too late. He's gonna find his purpose. Whoa, whoa, I'm gonna find, find my purpose. purpose. He's gonna find <laughs> yeah, his purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a week, a month, a year, at a job, or smoking grass, maybe at a pottery class. Could it be? Yes, it could. Something's coming, something good. I'm gonna find my purpose, yeah. What will it be? Where will it be? My purpose in life is a mystery. Gotta find my purpose. Oh, gotta find me. Whoa, whoa, I'm gonna find my purpose. Purpose, purpose, purpose. I gotta find me. We have four freshman students here with us this morning from the School of the Arts to share with us a few words about why they chose Fairleigh Dickinson University and the School of the Arts. Please welcome Emily Copley, Gianna Ritto, Joshua Sukel, and Kayla Nyerva, freshmen from the School of the Arts. So if you would please introduce yourselves, tell us your major, and just a brief summary of why you chose Fairleigh Dickinson University and the School of the Arts. Hi, my name is Emily Copley. I am a concentration in creative writing. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose FDU was uh, all the opportunities that they offer for students. One of the uh, many programs that they offer here is, that I'm involved in is called the Learning Community. And in the Learning Community, students of um, all different majors in uh, the arts, including film, graphic design, animation, creative writing, etc., uh, can work cohesively in the school environment in and out of the classroom in order to accomplish goals and uh, to complete the projects independently. And as a student, I value this highly because you can, um, as a creative writing student, I don't know much about like film or like graphic design or animation. So um, I highly believe that as a school, we should all be involved within each other. And as a arts major, it is important for students to know all of their uh, opportunities in order to be involved with the arts 
whether you're um, just starting out or you're advanced in your career, it's important for everybody to have a little piece of everything in order to understand what the arts actually offer. Hi, I'm John Amito. I'm a graphic design major with a concentration in illustration. Uh, I chose to come to FDU because I heard that FDU had a great graphic design program, and also this was one of the few schools I saw that offered illustration. Hi, my name is Josh Basuko. I am a film major, concentration in directing, and I chose FDU because I love the environment. Uh, I love all of the other majors, and the fact that I can work with them is just incredible. Uh, I love the I love the fact that this school is a just is a beautiful place to live. It has such a great history behind it, and the amount of places you can film here is incredible. Um, I also love being hands-on, and the fact that I can be you know the fact that, that all of my teachers encourage me to go out and film is great. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Our final guest this morning is Professor Howard Lebov, Chair of the School of the Arts. Thank you. I had, uh, I had some prepared remarks, but it turns out uh, that was said, that was said, <laughs> and that was sung. Okay, um, so uh, true story. Uh, when I walk down the streets of Madison, people will stop me and they'll say, Howard, and I say, how did you know my name? They say, um, how do you mix up a potion that can turn into a school of the arts? And I say, well, first you need the most important thing, the allspice of potions I have newt. But then you, th then you need three more critical things. The next ingredient is students. Students who show talent and potential, the willingness to work hard, students who are willing to commit to training and mentoring, who show the curiosity to learn not only the skills of their craft, but about how that craft is used in our world, in business, and how it fits into, furthers, and comments upon the larger culture we share. Students who want to earn the moniker artist. Next, sprinkle in talented professors, who themselves are established, accomplished artists. Professors who have learned how to communicate the skills needed to begin the journey toward mastering the craft. They'll work most closely with you in the classroom, the studio, the stage, the computer lab, the seminar room, my colleagues and friends. They are the foundation of this program. They are Robin Barkley, Renee Stenke, David Grant, Janet O'Neill, David Landau, Cindy Tolley Lois, Rebecca Chase, Judy Munellis, Justin Shaw, Minna Proctor, John Cinco, Alan Cohen, Stacy Lentz, David Daniel, Elliot Hoffman, Stephen Hollis, George Cochran, Vince Guagenti, Kate Naiman, and John Ehrenberg. And we always remember our friend, the late Rich Turk. The next ingredient, educational leaders who work hard behind the scenes, who have determined that as the world changes, so must the demands of education. New methods of teaching, new approaches to learning and applying the arts are what's needed to build an innovative program to create this new school and who will continue to work to develop and grow our resources. The educational leaders of our university, President Capuano, Provost Small, and our own Dean Jeff Weinman. So now we've poured in all the ingredients to our potion, time to let it simmer. And today we dedicate ourselves to the success of this new venture the Fairleigh Dickinson University School of the Arts. Thank you very much.
Something is stirring, shifting ground. It's just begun. Edges are blurring all around, and yesterday is done. Feel the flow, Feel the flow. hear what's happening, hear what's happening. Long ago, all we had was that funny feeling, saying someday we'd send them reeling. Now it looks like we can Someday just began It's our time, breathe it in Worlds to change and worlds to win Our time coming through Me and you, pal, me and you Our dreams.